hello hello everybody oh my goodness i am so excited to have all of you here today and i have two of the most amazing women with me and i'm very excited i'm like already very warm because <laughs> i got so excited we are going to start off with some intros for some of you, this might be the very first time that you maybe hear about Libsyn. Um, so this, the, Libsyn is the largest podcasting host and distribution company that's been at this podcasting game since 2004, which is uh, a long time. Uh, Libsyn actually start, stands for Liberated Syndication. And living into that name as a company, we've been particularly focused on championing the global diversification of, of the podcasting industry for a while, from content creators to distribution via our destinations, to global growth in listenership, always centering in independent podcasters. So we are very much known for supporting just the independent voices, the everyday voices that grab a microphone and decide they want to podcast. lipson has been around historically for the entire time. All right, um, and uh, so I am Elsie Escobar, and I'll be having my 14th year anniversary here. Can you believe that? July 31st in podcasting. Um, I started out not knowing absolutely anything at all about what, well, podcasting didn't exist almost at that time, but and anything audio related, anything about the industry, um, and I've been now working in it for over a decade. Uh, and I'm, I've co-founded the largest podcasting community for women podcasters and being the very first and only Latina inducted into the Academy of Podcasters Hall of Fame. Um, I am a podcasting advocate and mentor primarily to women podcasting leaders. And now <laughs> to introduce my illustrious guests. So here we are. I'm going to focus the screen. Ta-da! We have people. Yay! So um, I'm going to make them feel a little bit uncomfortable because I'm going to, you know, flower them with lots of things and, and yummy things because I, I don't necessarily like to talk about myself, even though I just did because it was written in front of me. But alas, I know um, um, these women. Uh, I started to get to know them last year. I mean, in a, in a deeper way, just because we met each other, which was, isn't that crazy? It's been about a year since that happened. That's kind of nutty. Um, but let's start together on, I think on the right hand, on the left, on the right hand side, Jaleka, you can see her there in the black, branded black and white stripes, because I don't know if it like changes for people's screens. So, you know, so I'll start there and I'll start with her mission. So Jaleka, after 18 plus years in media, Jaleka founded a digital media studio whose mission is to support and amplify the work of creators from the margins in digital audio and film. She has made inclusion a central theme in her life's work while endeavoring to fully understand her own experiences as a hyphenated American. I didn't even know that was a thing. Thank you so much for letting me know that. I like that. Um, she edited and produced NPR's Code Switch podcast, consulted on show and podcast episodes of NPR's Planet Money, Morning Edition, All Things Considered, and Alt Latino. And she is currently a Tory Burge Foundation 2020 Fellow. Um, I personally connected with Jaleka first with her amazing writing. I found her writing to be the thing that draw, drew me in where I immediately was like, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> um, and then became obsessed with all of her work in podcasting, like the Peabody nominated 70 million. And two of my current favorite podcasts, Feeling My Flow, which my 11 year old daughter loves. And it is all about menstruation and it's amazing. And my therapy <laughs> slash trauma <laughs> love of how to talk to mommy and Bobby about anything. Welcome, Jaleka. Thank you. Thank you. You're hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> we will talk about the trauma that your podcast gives me at some point in the future. Yes. But alas, on the we are now moving on to our other mighty powerhouse here, Martina Castro, who is in the center. Uh, Martina Castro is CEO and founder of Adonde Media, a globally minded podcast production company. Over the past 15 years, she has produced and edited award winning audio content in both US and Latin America, which is like amazing. She has worked at National Public Radio and NPR member um, station KALWFM and NPR Radio Ambulante. 
a Spanish language and narrative journalism podcast. She co-founded, I mean, in 2011 and produced <laughs> until September 2016, because that's like, that's a long time for in audio. Um, Martina's independent work has aired nationally on NPR's All Things Considered and Morning Edition, played on stage at Pop-Up Magazine, and has been recognized with various awards, including the 2014 National Edward R. Murrow Award for Best Audio Documentary. So I came into contact with Martina via her voice through her work in Duolingo podcast. So that was my first introduction oh. to her. It was the very first podcast that I listened to that was bilingual in nature and helped me really sense the power of listening in other languages weaved together in one piece as a cohesive thing. I, I was blown away. I loved it. And therefore, that's how I stepped into that. Um, and as of late, she's been busy building community via Podcasteros, which uh, for all kinds of audio, this it's a community for all kinds of audio makers and podcasting, documentary makers, sound designers, engineers, producers, journalists, listeners, and many others. And obviously the thing that brings everybody together there is podcasting. And oh my gosh, Encuesta Pod, which started in 2017, I believe was the very first, I may be wrong, but I believe it was the very first collaborative survey to get to know the Spanish speaking listening audience. Um, yes. And I feel it was the impetus that we are here today. So welcome Martina Castro. Yay. Thank you so much. What an amazing <laughs> introduction. Oh my God. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, there's not enough time to let you guys know how amazing you are. But that said, I mean, kind of speaking into the, um, the impetus of why we're here together to, to, to today, especially with Encuesta Pod, Martina, which you began like in 2017, as I mentioned, and now we kind of like parlayed into this, the Latino listeners podcast report that you guys uh, spearheaded here. So, so I'm going to give you a quote that actually Tom Webster mentioned in our episode of the feed that we just recorded that was just released like this week. And he said, Quote, the first way to get served appropriately is to be measured, unquote. And that actually really struck a chord because I never really realized the importance of measuring in that context. So can you talk a little bit? And I don't know, Martina, maybe you can start with first Enquesta pod and then what drove you to grab Juleka to then all of a sudden email me. <laughs> To get Honestly, I feel like she <laughs> grabs me. Right. <laughs> it's always Juleka grabbing me. I just yeah, okay, okay. 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 She's, she's the queen of like taking action and seeing <laughs> how things can come together magically. So I want to give her that credit. But yeah, no, I'll, I mean, it's so wonderful to get to talk about this because um, this is something that, uh, you know, many people knew when Juleka has known, but we haven't talked about it really in the open. But um, you had prompted us with a question that I'm gonna just bring up right here, which is yeah. what's the personal side of how we reacted to this all coming together. And yeah. um, the, many people contacted me about what, how emotional it was to feel counted, you know, to yeah. see ourselves reflected in this report. It's, it is emotional. Um, and for me, the personal side is goes a little bit deeper in that I like I, f I really truly feel like I dreamt this up like three years ago and it was at the same time I was dreaming up Adonde Media and Podcasteros you know Podcasteros was a very new community I had launched it a couple months with a co-founder my co-founder Mariano Pachela months before launching Adonde Media and as part of an incubator a startup incubator called Startup Chile in Santiago Chile and uh I, in that incubator process, you have to do all these mock presentations of like to investors, you know? And I was like bringing them this massively innovative idea, podcasts in Spanish. Like it was like, <laughs> I mean, my hope, the other women in the thing were like doing AI, robotics, you know? And I'm like, no, 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 podcasts. <laughs> and, and to make my case for my innovative business, I had to use data from the United States in English, you know, like it was just 
the extrapolations, the, the gymna mental gymnastics I would do to make a case. I was like, well, if you pair this data with smartphone penetration rates in Santiago, plus, you know, how much Latinos love radio, you would imagine that there would be a market for this thing that I'm describing called podcasts. You know, it was ridiculous. And I said, exactly what you said, without the data, if we're not measured, we don't exist. Right. We need that data. And so I actually called Tom Webster. Like mm -hmm. I actually called, talked to him on the phone. I was like, so how much would it cost to do like, you know, like a survey of like all of Latin America and but not accessible in month two of my business. So we launched Inquistapod. And you know, it was such a crowning achievement because it was about starting to do this counting, but non-scientific, right. self-selecting survey. Um, spread around thanks to 200 podcast producers that came together to disseminate this uh, survey uh, at the same time. And it was, it was the very first. And when we did it the second time in 2019, still the only one. Mm -hmm. And that I have to give credit to the fact that I talked about those results on a panel you invited me to be a part of. That's right. The podcast movement. And that's when we <laughs> first met in person. And that was when Gabe, um, uh, oh my gosh, Soto. Soto, thank you, from Edison Research was in the audience and said, let's do this. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, like, yeah. you also, and Juleka at that same week was like, we got to make this happen. This, this one she <laughs> told me, and she's like, we got to make this happen. Let's do this. You and I can do this. I'm like, because I was starting to lose faith a little bit. I was like, oh my God, it's been three years. Yeah. And no one has yet done this uh, important work. And it's, as you know, it's not that easy to pull together, no. but the universe brought us to this moment. I mean, really, you were a big part of that, Elsie. Um, uh -huh. so. Thank you. So Jaleka, what did, why did you, wh how was this impactful to you? Like coming into the scene, sort of like bubbling with your business, you know, having worked in podcasting for a little bit then, um, why was this specific data important to, to you as a human? Like I'm not even as a producer, but, just as a human. So I'm a journalist by training and I was a journalist for 18 years. I'm still a journalist and the core of our business is run with journalistic ethos and journalistic standards and measuring stuff. Like you can't write an article without data. Like good right. luck getting past your editor. You can't have, you know, a concluding anything about anything that you're writing about without bringing data to bear. And so I was very frustrated because when I was trying to say, I am making podcasts for a Latina audience, people were like, who, where, how many? And I had right. nothing. I, I had basically anecdotal data like Martina, where I was like, well, if you think about the fact that there's 60 million of us, <laughs> and then you break that down by the concentrations in the East Coast and the Southwest and the West Coast, then exactly, then you can extrapolate. It was, it was exactly what Martina said. It was mental gymnastics. Trying right. to make the case that there was a viable audience. I mean, if someone paid me $5 for every time I said, we are younger, we are digital natives, we are fully bilingual and multilingual, we are hyphenated. I mean, I sounded like a broken record. Right. Because all I had to say was, listen, I know because I've spent 20 years writing about them. That's how right. I know. And I know so much about how they consume media. I know about what, where they're headed, you know, five and six and 10 years down the line, right? And so it was really weird because it was that same week that I was like, we have to do this. And she was like, yeah, Edison said the same thing. So I'm going to go to this one. Oh my God. She like ran off the podcast movement to talk to them. And I texted like an hour later and I was like, so? And then she's like, oh, it's really expensive. And I was like, oh. <laughs> I'm like, literally, I was like, wait, so that's not a no, right? <laughs> like when something is not a no to me, it's a yes. Right, like, so right. I was just like, oh, so we just have to get some money. We can get some money. <laughs> you know, I said, we can get the money because she's, you know, incredible. She co-created Radio Ambulante. She's got Duolingo. I mean, um, let's be clear that she debuted number one on Apple iTunes. Exactly. Duolingo en Español. Right. Okay? Like, 
I'm sorry. That's a constellation <laughs> level startup, right? I Wait, and then she she did it again though with the second the season. Yeah. yeah, in a different it's language. It's what I do. I'm a team pastor. It's what I do. You guys. So, so then we started calling people around, right? right. We started calling the, the powerful players and saying, this is an opportunity. And you were one of the players that we called because we knew that first you would get it, but we also knew that Lipson, because of you, would be interested, right? Mm -hmm. Because they see how much you are an influence in the industry and they see how much you have embedded the sense of there's room for everyone in the industry, right? right. So that was an easy one for us to be like, oh, Elsie, I'm dull, right? <laughs> and so the pitch is really simple, right? There's 15 million Latino podcast listeners, right? right. So what are, you, what, are you, what are you waiting around for, right? They're ready. And so to me, it was really gratifying to get a lot of, yes, we're in, like within a week of us sending like a little one sheet that we put together, Pandora, you guys, NPR, and it's just smart business, right? It's smart business to anticipate your consumers' needs and overserve them, which is what I think Edison has done so well with this, right? Yes. As, first of all, as an intelligence brand, Edison has now overserved the podcast industry with invaluable data. Mm -hmm. And they have yep. overserved right. us as producers with invaluable data. I don't mm -hmm. have to guess, guesstimate, and try and convince. Look, it's right here, independently oh, verified. You know, incredible. Yeah, it's so powerful because okay, so so we're going to come back to the data here, but moving into something that I. I've been thinking about a lot, especially with you, Jaleika, as you were mentioning, you know, I've been serving this community for so long. I've been writing about this community for so long. So who are the Latinos in podcasting without the data right now? So I want you to give me exactly what you mentioned before, maybe quantify okay. it even clearer, more Jaleika. And then I'd love to hear from you, Martina, in the sense of like in your gut instinct, who are the Latinos in podcasting, whether they're creators or listeners? Okay, so I definitely will. I'll stay with the with the listeners, and then you take the creators mm -hmm. if you want to split it that way. So this is what I did, right? And I still I still talk about this, and will continue to talk about this. So in the absence of independently verified podcasting, audio listening, digital audio data about Latinos, I did what any journalist would do to make a case. I went to other data. So mm. I spent months finding and aggregating as much data about Latinos and then Latinas as, as, as I possibly could so that I could create an avatar for my ideal listener. And if anybody goes to latiguawilliams.com, you will see a picture of her. She's Afro-Latina, she's 26, her name is Kenya. She lives in the top 25 markets in the United States. She's college educated. She's the oldest of three, first one to go to college. Both parents work multiple jobs, but they never finished high school. Should I continue? Does this girl sound familiar to right. you? Do you know yeah. her? Right. Yeah. So I aggregated all of this information, right? Understanding what the means is across many uh, measurements for Latinos. And I said, well, Kenya, she's the one I'm making the show for. And then from that, I said, oh, no, the whole network I'm making for Kenya and her circle of friends because my. You know, my whole theory of audience development is based around that first follower. It's based around over-serving that first follower, my Kenya, who then will be so happy the way that you and your daughter love feeling my flow. Yeah. You're proof of my theory, right? I'm over-serving you because I'm giving you Latina to Latina. I'm giving you how to talk to mommy and papi. And I'm giving you for your daughter feeling my flow. Mm -hmm. You're my Kenya, right? And so... Right. When I had to make the case that these listeners existed, I focused on saying, look, there's about 7.2 million Kenyas. And if I can get to 1% of them with my podcast, I'm golden. You know, and so right. that really helped because, you know, when I say 60,000 Latinos turn 18 every month, that's a fact, right? Mm. When I say we grew 3% in the national population in three years, that's a fact, right? Like there are all of these undeniable facts about who we are. It just had never been filtered filter through the lens of how are they consuming podcasts? And now we know. Right. Now we know. 
Yeah. So Martina, you're, t you're touching base a lot with podcasters, even outside of the U S with podcasteros, you're serving, I would say Latin America or the entire Spanish speaking no, podcasters no. globally. I don't know. Oh my gosh. We have members in like Siberia. So. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I, it, for me, it was really important. To, and this was, I learned so much through Radio Ambulante. I mean, mm -hmm. so many of the things and lessons that we learned together with my co-founders, I've been applying to what we do in Adonde Media. And um, one of the big lessons in us making that incredible podcast, which continues to be such a feat and such a standout, is that we had to invest in our creative community. We thought, oh, we'll just go to the top journalists and they'll just know how to mm. make a story like this. They did not. Um, so training and education had to go, like we could not make the podcast unless we were gonna make every story ourselves without training people and, and investing in, the, in bringing up a community of makers and creators with us. So uh, before launching on the media, I launched Podcasteros because I was like, I need to know who is making things. Mm. What are they making? Where are they? What do, what do they know? What do they need to know? Um, well, how can I give back? Like, what is the biggest impact? And I just needed to get to know them. And it started off just as an email newsletter. Um, and very quickly, you know, I mean, I think we're like nearing a thousand, um, you know, in our in our community here of podcasteros. And it, as you said, it spans everything, you know, sound designers, people who run studios to actually field producers and podcast hosts, uh, everything. Um, and what I learned at that time, which, you know, things have changed a lot. Things are changing month by month, I'll tell you, in Latin American podcasting. And I think, in, I think you'll see, as the data shows, there's a lot of parallels to the way right. Latino community in the U.S. Um, but very much um, hungry to, to do, they started off in the same realm that we all started off in, in the early days, you know, a mic and a bunch of friends talking about the things that we love. Um, building very grassroots or, uh, communities around their content, um, but very, very much divorced from other podcasters. So mm -hmm. what has now happened, thanks to Podcasteros and a lot of other communities that have sprouted up, um, and also Encuentros Podcasteros, like us getting together and, and sharing right. like, our love of podcasting, that was so necessary in a, mark, in a region that was you know, divided by geography, um, some, you know, obviously cultural context and stuff, but no NPR. I always talk about that, how NPR really gave such a gift to the podcasting industry of today by connecting us. Like we had a web of connection already as a community in the U.S. that I don't think um, in Spanish language podcasting were quite there, or even in Latinos. Like, right. I don't know about you, Juleka, but it's not that easy to connect with other Latino podcast makers. We, we just aren't, we don't have that yet. So I right. think we're a little siloed, but we're hungry to experiment because they are consuming the craft of what has happened in the US with all the abundance of resources that we've had here and training. Um, so you'll find like incredible, uh, like a lot of science fiction podcasting you know, um, terror podcasts, you know, like, I mean, there's like everything under the sun is actually already happening. It's just happening in silos. And there are still, I, I believe that Latino podcasters are still under, um, you know, I don't want to use they're not professionalized because it's not like they don't consider themselves professional, but um, without the data, I mean, I just go back to this, without the data, you can't go to a, an advertiser and make a case for why they should sponsor your podcast. So when I say, I, th I guess the word monetizing is, right. is the word, like it's very, very hard to monetize without this data. Um, so, you know, when you don't know what the general potential of your podcast is, and all you know is your own niche audience, again, siloed, very, very siloed. And I think this data has a huge potential for bringing us together under this, uh, you know, th th this data that we can take to market and start bringing brands to the table and say, hey, this is what this is what you're passing up by not sponsoring our podcasts and our content. I, I think you're right, uh, especially about the people who are doing it and the, uh, the, the siloed part of it, because the, it's the, it's such a sm there's smaller communities and those have harder 
ways of reaching to each other and there isn't anything that's cohesively bringing all the Latinos and all the Spanish speaking podcasters because we're all vast and we're like geographically so diverse in terms of where we are and how we move because at least my at least with my family our movements are so huge you know my movement from one country to another country plus how we moved even within California and the way that I moved then away from my my home right have always been really seminal times where I had to restart yet another connection to community all right it's like this migrant sort of sense of mind where I remember every time I land I always go like okay who am I being surrounded by? And it, it feels like I have to rebuild those connections again to find each other again. That said, now moving into the conversation around the data, which, um, you know, I kind of want to really talk first about what what is it? What did you think the data was going to tell you? Um, because I know we but we started to bring some information in, but I'm going to let you know what I thought the data was going to tell me that I that I that I thought it wasn't like that there wasn't going to be as much awareness is what I thought and uh, collectively, right? And then I also thought that the audience demographically and like primarily focusing on age would equal to the general podcast listening population. So I had sort of siloed myself in seeing what the potential was based on my own understanding. So I made decisions based on my behavior. I'm this person, of course, I know what podcasting is. And I'm, an, you know, I'm moving into middle age. Therefore, all middle aged women, <laughs> of course, they're listening to podcasts. And I completely forgot that I'm such a not a normal podcast listener, you know. So that was my surprise with the data. Do you, uh, what do you think, Jaleka? Was there something that you were like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> Um, uh, oh, you know, okay, so one thing surprised me, um, which was the fact that Spanish, Spanish, Spanish native speakers out uh, over index the English speakers in how long they've been listening. That one really surprised me. But then I thought, well, there's probably way more Spanish language only Latin America based podcasts. And so if you're if you're just looking by language, which by the way, Apple Podcasts, can can we get a language search? Uh Spotify, yes, can we I've get a said language? It many times. Please. Many times, many times. Okay, we need to keep saying it. More um, time. Yes, everybody. Uh, Laura, <laughs> all of you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. What is up with that? It's I don't so know. Really, so simple, right? Because they already ask us. It's in the RSS. So yeah. you have the data. Speaking yeah. of data. Anyways, that was the one thing that surprised me. Um, the other thing that I definitely, okay, this one also surprised me. I assumed that more of us would be listening at home, but I think mm. that that's my old school thinking that, you know, Latinos are so family centric. Latinos live in extended multi-generational families, yada, 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 yada. And so I think that that's sort of like an old school throwback in my thinking that that's where our you know, our consumption would be, but it's not, right. it's actually not concentrated in the home. And so then that actually changes. It doesn't change. It alters a little bit my theory of audience growth, because I count on Kenya to go back to back home and talk about what she's listened to today. And, right. and say, hey, you got to listen to this or let's listen together. So now I'm thinking, okay, I have to pay more attention to where she's listening right? Because that's probably where she's going to be sharing also. And right. so that was that was a little bit of a surprise to me. But it, the whole study was really affirming. I mean, I have to, I have to give it to, to Gabe because um, the level of granularity that Martina and I wanted in the survey. <laughs> and me too. I was asking other questions too. You guys were like, let's get this specific. And I'm like, how about even more? With <laughs> I just wanted, I mean, literally, I wanted to know everything. But but then at, at, at one point where we were like at 70 questions or whatever that was, it was just untenable. Then I said to myself, okay, you just have to do it again, right? So that's kind of like how I was able to back up from my desire to know everything, right? To say, okay, but 
this is actually going to prepare you to ask even better questions the next time around. So yeah. now we just have to basically say, okay, so every two years we've got to do one of these and, you know, sort of like commit to that regularity and so that we can really follow along in how the, the Latin audience is growing in podcasting. I want to say two things though, because, um, and I'll try to be super brief. One of the things that I really loved about the, the, the study is that I can now say confidently, the show doesn't have to be about being Latino. Right. <laughs> like Latinos don't need more shows about being Latino. Like we really <laughs> want all kinds of other things. We want sports shows. What? And finance shows. What? And magic shows. I mean, we want comedy and drama. I mean, we want horticulture shows and we want yoga shows, right? And so that to me has been so liberating, even though I, I do produce Latino to Latina, right? right? But I'm so happy for the creators who are coming into the space with this information in hand, right? So they can say, oh, yes, absolutely. I can make a show about organic Mexican ingredients. I can do right. that if I want to. Right, because you now have a 15 million rich audience mm -hmm. who will find you, right? You will find your 1,000 loyal listeners. You might find 10,000 loyal listeners if you make that show. So that was one. And then the, the second one for me is interest convergence. I can finally, without any shadow of a doubt, say to an advertiser, you see this Venn diagram of where you wanna sell and where my listeners are? It's right here. Mm. Like without any doubt, without any question, especially when it comes to lifestyle, travel, uh, technology, cars, because all I, all I have to do is overlay this study with the consumer spending trends. And I've got what I need to go mm. and finally just say, come on, you guys, I've, been, I've, I've spent three years telling you the same thing here. Just just take a minute, go and look at it. And then let's talk when you're ready. And so I'm, I'm really happy about that because I think people coming into the space are gonna be so much more prepared and will just, it will save them so much headache and so much extra work, you know? So I'm, I'm really happy about that. That's great. So Martina, so me, kind of moving from that data, from that surprise to, but also kind of switching it into the fact that um, of what it actually told you. So we can like put those together, like one thing you were surprised at and then like, wow, validation, just like what Jaleco was just talking about. Yeah, this is exactly what I thought. Yeah, well, I mean, there's some standout things that I, I mean, I, I think I literally like whooped and hollered on the phone call <laughs> with, with Edison when they were briefing us on the results. I was like, yes. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I've been saying this forever. <laughs> like, <Yeah>. so, like <laughs> so the YouTube one. I think that was like oh a setup yes. for everyone. Yes. Stop everybody, yes. you know, let me see. I have the I have the report here. So I just want to like help people, you know, 73% of US Latino monthly podcast listeners reported ever listening to podcasts on YouTube. Um they, it also was the most where they most often listen. It was oh, the majority um, that and Spotify being number two were like, I mean, vind, vind, vindication. full vindication, yeah. like validation, vindication, like all of the things. Like I was just like, yes. And to see it so clearly put, it was shocking. I mean, it's controversial even. It's uh, cool. Yeah. You know, I'm secretly hoping that WhatsApp will see the report and add a podcast player to the app. Oh my God! Like, it's it's not so secretly yeah. anymore. <laughs> so there's the other, you know, because there's the other. That's like what I wanted to comment on is yeah. the other percentage. Oh, that's the right? other thing, and that's huge. Yeah. And like to me, it was like all of those things. It was WhatsApp. It was TikTok. Yeah. It was you know all Social of these media. other places that yeah. you don't even know are happening. And I do, and that's definitely not U.S. centric, right? Because I know in South Africa. They have, um, a, they do have, they call it a podcast. They have a company, a production company in, in South Africa that creates podcasts for WhatsApp. And then I looked into it, but they are doing it, not necessarily using RSS feeds, right? So they are uh, doing small audio bits. The, one of the shows is called What's Crap 
in WhatsApp, and it's created, <laughs> it's created to stop disinformation about oh, whatever. Wow. And so you, again, it's not delivered in the same way we would think about it. It's delivered in a broadcasting channel, right? So you subscribe to it and you can't chat. It's just getting one way communication. And they just put a link to the file and it's around nine to 10 minutes long. I'm trying to figure out how they do the up, like what the back end of this is. But I thought, wow, this is really neat. But mind you, but still, it's very native to to WhatsApp, right? The, it's, it's really building on the behavior of that. Yeah. But I just thought, you know, why not? I mean, I, this is one of the one of the conclusions. I mean, yeah. that basically you can make from this data is, uh, first of all, that other category is even bigger for non-US right. born uh, yeah. Latinos. And it's like, you have to find Latinos where they are. Mm -hmm. I mean, this idea that we are expecting them to understand what a podcast is, yep. to find yeah. that app, to know how to find your show in that app. It's just so many steps, like it's bad user experience, you know, design. So anyway, I, yeah, I think that we're going to see a lot more, util, you know, utilization of YouTube in the podcasting space. Maybe those are not called podcasts, right? Like that's, I think the, the, the controversial thing. Is it a podcast if it's on YouTube? Hmm? The, yep. the people who answered this saw that it was. Um, and then the, the ease with which people listen in both languages, I think was also just a confirmation of what we've seen in Encuesta Pod. Um, the awareness issue I think was super, um, you know, Com com confirmed what we know, you know, that the term is so tough for us, <laughs> you know, especially for the, for the non U S born and the Spanish dominant, it's like, has no connotation for what it is. You know? It's like my mother says, it's a show. 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 Okay. It's a show. And that's why it's so divorced of the actual medium because the show can get to you via so many different ways. Yep. So um, I'm trying to think of what surprised me. Oh, the, just the, I mean, the, the fact that Latinos actually spend more time spending, listening to podcasts than the general public, that was huge. I was like 22% um reported listening more than uh than the, the eight, than 18 of the general population right so like that to me was huge um like i didn't expect that one um yeah. and and that uh even that the weekly listening is so on par with the general population too you know 20 percent of latinos had listened in the last week 23 percent of the general population that's pretty close yeah. you know so as an underserved market and community i really believe that our listening habits are showing how hungry we are for this content we just you know if the and so it's my so my mind starts to like go okay yeah. what if the awareness was on yeah. what if we had more content made for us by us what if we figured out the distrib the discoverability issue and like you know I, there's just i think this this community and this sector of listening is primed oh my to gosh explode. oh oh yeah and so i think that this really wraps up for our last question before we get to some, some of the q and a's and we finish off the hour and cuz you're nailing it right there and really for us like my the last prompt if you will is you know what do we hope to do with what we've learned to grow the diverse audiences and creators in podcasting and i'm i'm gonna like coin it like really quick as we start here to just share what i think about it but one of the biggest things for me was education and when i mention education it is really divided into diversification of outreach for podcasters meaning their marketing which what you were just talking about uh, Martina, which is about kind of looking outside the box. Where are the people really listening? How do we, you know, instead of saying like listen in and in Apple Podcasts, like and and you know, really leading with something like that, we are really excluding a lot of people who are 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 just not using uh, an, an iPhone, right? So how can we make our marketing diverse diverse enough to reach all of those audiences? And that also means that we have to be advocates, not just for our podcast, but for the medium itself um, about podcasting. Like what is 
podcasting and having conversations locally, having conversations with our families, having conversations, pointing them out with people that may or may not know that are part of our families, where we talk about podcasting and kind of make that a thing. And even if it's to Joe, it's this el Joe, y aquí lo tengo, you know, and you show people where they can find it. And then the last thing to me, if it's diversification of technology as well, right? So we support people to make better choices and how to use what they're using. So let's say everybody is listening in YouTube and you're like, great dad, I love that you're listening to my show in YouTube, but you can also use this. <laughs> this is actually, sometimes it could be better. <laughs> you know, to really allowing our people to understand what that experience is and, and offer, because there's a lot of, of developers who are creating really wonderful apps that are very, very well suited for listening that could make like podcasting grow. Um, and lastly, to your point, uh, Martina, again, community building, right? Build, bringing us together and really seeing how much we are together. I have one bit of data that I had my friend Daniel Lewis from, and I'm gonna give him a shout out. Callie, you have to put the link in the show notes um, down there. Uh, and the show notes, look, I'm having podcast <laughs> lingo in the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's called my podcast reviews, my podcast reviews.com. He does podcast industry statistics that are based on the actual Apple podcast database. So this is pure, like straight up data. So last night I was like, Daniel, you got to give me how many podcasts are in Apple podcasts that are using the Espanol tag. So Ooh. he essentially told that, like, I'm going to give you a guesstimate now because it's not absolutely 100% like, because he's like, well, this isn't an actual, you know, he told me all the how it's not totally actually, but he's like, you, you could say that it's around 10%. So now oh. you have a number around wow. 10% are using the EN, you know, the ES, yes. ES tag in Apple Podcasts. So currently you can do the math right there. Right now there's over a million, right? There's over a million podcasts out there. So what's 10% of a million? So you have an idea of how many Spanish speaking self-selected podcasts are using the Spanish tag in the mix there. So, I mean, that's, that's not, huge. I mean, give or take, right? So what he mentioned to me is that it's also not... He didn't really, because he's really specific when it comes to data. Think, bless him, data man. But he said, you have to remember, these are not, I did not exclude, you know, podcasts that are like uh, not pod faded, that have not been updated, mm -hmm. you know, all of that stuff. He didn't have any of that stuff there. So he said, you would be safe to say around 10%. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I'll take that <laughs> around 10%. So, I mean, thinking that now, 10%, we have, community right how can we connect with that community now i throw it off to you what do we think that we could do to diversify our content our our, our listenership independently as that you guys have to to mention martina your turn me oh okay <laughs> what can we do to diversify well <sighs> hmm that's a great question i've been thinking about this a lot in the light of the uh, Black Lives Matter movement and how we've all been reflecting on our own biases and what are we doing for our community and diversifying our communities. I think one of the big things that we have left to do, I mean, obviously, Podcasteros is, I mean, I, I can't get more excited or proud of that community that we, we've been building and that we're investing even more in this year and with webinars and stuff. But those people have self-selected to mm. join us. They have found us through their own path of privilege, right? So how do we find people who haven't even reached out, who have, right. don't even know that they could make a podcast, who don't even know that it's that their voice is valuable and needs to be heard? Mm -hmm. So when I think of diversity, I think of that, of like going to where they are, you know, kind of like we do with our audiences, right? Like we need to go to where they are and they're not necessarily putting podcasts in Google, you know, and finding us. We need to go find them. So I think it's going to the, the beginning of where we find the people who are our future creators who don't even know yet that they need that we need them. <laughs> so that to me is my my own like I've taken on that task mm -hmm. recently and, and we're 
thinking really hard at Adonde Media as to how we are going to put resources to going to find the next generation of, of creators in Latin America and also in the Latino community in the US. Um, especially because that, that 30% Afro-Latino number will not leave me. You know, more people identify as Latino, right. Latino and indigenous than anything else, than the other. Yeah. We cannot forget this. This is the first time we're looking at it in the face. And so we're underserving parts of our Latino audience. Mm -hmm. You know, I am at least. I'll tell you, speak for myself. Yep. So the only thing I'll add to that is that for me, it was really affirming because my, my impetus, part of my impetus for starting the company was, yes, I love podcasting deeply. I really do. It, it has given me a new language as a storyteller. But when I started the company, I was very clear that I wanted to create seeds of intellectual property that could grow into multiple things across multiple genres. And I feel very much now even more validated in that founding belief, because I want to be a place where Kenya can comfortably come and say, oh, they make some of my favorite movies. Oh, they've also, you know, branched off and made some young adult books that I'm going to share with my niece. And they've also, you know, started making these live events for me to go as a young professional to develop, right? Because what I am nurturing here is a deeper understanding of who she is and what her needs are, right? I'm not just creating something and seeing if it sticks. Like that's not a model of creation that I embrace, have ever embraced. I don't have time. I don't have time to see what sticks. I have to start with something that has some method to it and some proof, uh, you know, to at least say, yes, it will at least be interesting. It might take a while for it to take off, but it will be interesting. And so this, the, the study has really validated the notion that the key is diversity in the intellectual property that we're creating mm -hmm. for the audience. They are, they're hungry for things that are not just about because I am Latino. We got that, we're good on that. Now, how do we iterate beyond that? You know, and I'm just so, so happy that uh, the evidence now bears it out. Got it. Yep. That's awesome. And that actually leads us directly into our Q&A. And I have a, Q, a question for you that was submitted off of our little landing page that we created. By the way, we're going to have a link and you can see a link below here where it's like a resource that we're going to um, make sure that this you can still watch this later on. You can connect with these wonderful women and everything that they're doing because it's like a bazillion different things and it's all incredible. Um, so that you can always come back and then reference, tell your people to come and just consume the content. We'll do our best to optimize it for for just showing a little bit more of the conversation. But we had a question from Elizabeth and she asked, <laughs> what is the best way for a Latina to get recognized for her blog, podcast, etc.? How proactive should we be in showcasing our Latinidad in marketing materials or decks for brands? Who would like to take that one on? I I mean, I think Juleka is like the master at this. <laughs> I know, Juleka, I can tell that's like it. That's a Juleka question. In fact, it would be something that you would address in your webinar series that you're doing. So pitch yes, it in. The yes, actually. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm going to try not to be glib about it. But yes, I do have a, 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 a two more webinars coming up, podcastingseriously.com. Um, those have been really fun. And we're planning another three that are, are going to launch next month. But um, do not hide you letting me that. That's, that's for starters. If that is something that you're proud of, if it is something that is important to you, if it is something that is going to help you shape your creativity, don't hide it, mm -hmm. okay? However, being Latino is not enough, mm -hmm. okay? This is a creative field. So let your Latinidad nurture your creativity, inform how you tell stories, inform how you develop your characters, but being Latino is not enough in this creative endeavor or in any creative endeavor. And so 
the way to do that is to find what I call creative tension or creative conflict. And I, I talk about this all the time because this is one of the things that once it clicked for me, it was so easy to now think about how do I bring this to bear episode to episode, show to show. So creative conflict of creative or creative tension is not he said, she said, black or white, right or wrong, Republican, Democrat. That's not it. It's more putting two ideas in conversation with one another in a way that they have to keep talking, right? Mm -hmm. That's what creative tension is. And so if you want to interrogate some aspect of Latino culture, fantastic, go for it. But don't let it become a lecture, right? You have to throw that up against something else that continues the conversation. Clear example, I would love someone, and take this idea, it's free. I would love for someone to do this <laughs> podcast. How does cultural appropriation apply to phenotypically white Latinos and the creations of Afro-Latinos? You see that? I'm talking about Latinidad, but I am talking about Latinidad from a racial, cultural, artistic lens, right? That conversation is years long. And that's how you can get a podcast that maintains uh, integrity and that keeps the listener coming back because these two things have a lot to say to one another. And so, yes, you can absolutely build from and start with your Latinidad, but Latinidad alone is not enough. Hmm. All right. So we have a we have another question here. I think that I'm going to try to do this in, in under 60 seconds. But um, the question is from Marcella, and she says the data for the Latino podcast listener report shows there is still disinformation about what podcasts are, payment, how to listen, what should be the right strategy to attack this issue, and is everybody's job to educate the audience? And so my answer to that, yes, it is. If you are, if you are a creator and you, you need to know podcasting, number one, you need to know the podcasting industry, you need to know how it works. You need to know what people are doing once they see your promotional things, like what's their behavior, what's their next action. If they see a tweet, where are they clicking to? Where is it landing? How do they list? When is it just about pressing play? If they press play, can they then subscribe to your show? Like you have to really put yourself in the end user perspective to do that. And absolutely, you need to teach people how to use Apple Podcasts. You need to teach people how to use Spotify. You need to show them that there's other apps out there that you can do it. You need to show them about your YouTube channel that has all the stuff. Yeah, that's your job. That is our job to advocate for this. And the other thing is you also need to know why they should listen to your show versus doing anything else <laughs> because they can get the information by reading, by all kinds of other ways. You have to be so clear as to why this is meaningful to have in your ears and you have to sell them on that. For me, podcasts are like personal transformation. They literally affected who I am as a human. So I can tell you why listening above anything else really works for me, but you really have to believe it. And yeah, it's your job. That's part of who we are, I think, as podcasters, particularly as Latino podcasters, we need to tell our people this amazing new thing that you know about your in your that you can listen in your ears and how powerful that is. So that's what I and have that to say is about free. It. And that yeah, is and it's free. free. And it's free. And that's exactly it. And you have to tell them all those things. Yeah, it's your job. Nobody else is gonna do it for you. Spotify is always gonna push Spotify. Apple Podcasts is always gonna push Apple Podcasts. Whatever app you're they're all gonna be self, they're gonna be looking at themselves. It's our job to be able to give them an alternative to find our audience. Um, okay, next question. <laughs> Done answering that question. Um, <laughs> so this one says, Nielsen, <laughs> Nielsen had the Latina 2.0 fiscally conscious, culturally influential and familia forward where it is highlighted Latinas, where it highlighted Latinas specifically, can you talk about the external influences that drive us to consume and how we can continue to move the needle? This is from uh, Tatiana. That's a very in-depth question, I understand the question. Yeah, and I, I wish I could see that Let before, see. before I Oh well, Yeah, look it. at your yeah. questions. Look at the questions. See where it says, ask a question at the bottom. You can see these things. 
So sorry, uh, Nielsen had the Latina 2.0, Latina 2. So Nielsen, Latina 2.0. She is fiscally conscious. She is culturally influential and so familiar I mean, forward. So Elsie, I'm familiar with that report. Okay. Um, All right. And you don't you take it to like that. Yeah. So because that's one of the things that I use to build my avatar for for Kenya. And here's the thing. Um, a couple of things to know about, especially first and second generation Latinas, they have more spending power um, because they entered the job market more prepared on average. They have more education on average, and they stay unmarried longer and have fewer children. And so one of the consequences of that is that now Latinas um, are consuming more high-end and higher luxury brands. But that is no different than any other American who has ever moved from working class to middle class. That is exactly the same trend for anyone, Italian Americans, German Americans, Asian Americans, everyone has followed the same trend of you have upward mobility and so you spend more, right? And so there is no formula for getting Latina's attention when you're marketing except to not treat her like she's everyone else, right? So that does not mean pepper your commercials with some Spanish or give it a salsa beat. No, that's not what it means. That's oh, please, it means. please don't. Please don't. Um, just don't do that, right? Like, just don't, don't do, do it, that, right? Please. What it means is place your product in a context that is familiar to her, right? Place your product in a place where she would naturally find it and use it, right? And those spaces are different for Latinas, right? And mm. that's the key when you're marketing to us, right? Like we, we can understand and grasp when you're marketing to the general market and then we go okay i noticed that but that doesn't make us stop right it doesn't make us stop and what you want is for us to stop and say oh when i'm doing whatever i'm doing in my house you know that involves some aspect of my cultural identity i could use this product to do that even better right that's what we want right not the superficial identifiers right the cues that people have traditionally utilized to get our, our attention there's no depth in that and we want depth now right we want well i'll also say oh sorry sorry no, no go for it it just broke up for a second no i was just gonna say that um so the data was over you know listeners over index mail right they skew mail right um and that this is very similar to the data in the general population in 2017. so we're you know mm -hmm. there, it shows a lag but what do we also know anecdotally about who created podcasts in the beginning? A bunch of dudes. So right. I do think that the more Latinas that are making content, regardless of what it's about, we're gonna see more women and more Latina women consume it. So if we're talking about consumption of podcasts, I think that for sure is going to make a difference. Agreed. Good, good. Uh, all right, moving into another question about networking in Latinos, uh, about networking in Latino podcasters. Uh, for beginners, how can we collaborate and connect with other podcasters? Well, you can join. <laughs> Please join uh, our community. It's not that hard. Honestly, you can just subscribe to our email newsletter at podcasteros.com. Um, we are a Spanish language community for podcasters. I think you can also find great communities at airmedia.org um, and also through transom.org. At least there's a lot of resources there. Um, tons of Facebook groups. Um, I think the key is to start regional and local because that's where I, I started encouraging people in Latin America. I was like, at least get to know the people who are making podcasts in your backyard. Right. Because you guys are in your basements making podcasts by yourselves when yeah. you could actually meet up at a coffee shop post COVID and, you know, talk about what you, what you're making and maybe collaborate. Yeah. Like there's a ton of listening groups that have really, that are regional, you know, by city in the United States that have really given creative energy to, to communities of podcasters. So I recommend just start looking locally, Podcasteros, Air Media, and Transom. I don't know if Julie, you had a couple, any other suggestions? There's Bello Collective. Um, you should also oh. subscribe to Podnews, podnews.net. 
There's also a podcast garage from PRX. There's also House of Pod out in Denver, but they really work nationally. So there are a lot of places where you can uh, be in community with people who are creating podcasts. Yep. Yep. Um, and also Latina Podcasters is a great Facebook group that just started. They have a really strong presence in um, Instagram as well. Rita has been doing a fantastic job bringing, you know, really focusing on Latina women in podcasting. She's it's just started up and I think it's really amazing. Also, the uh, WOC walk community, uh, walkpodcasters.com. Danielle Desir is an inc incredible work that she has done together to put this in just like this. Uh, I, I'm so in awe of what she has put together just because she started, you know, from what happened with the Spotify Sound Up Boot Camp. That's where it all began. And now it's grown into this amazing thing. They're doing a whole thing, podthon.com. Um, it's starting on the, on the Saturday. So you guys go check out podthon.com. That's a really wonderful first step to support diverse voices in podcasting that started by diverse women just because of the need that they had. So all of this is bubbling up and we're all really uh, focusing on each other to just bring us up. Um, also, uh, I had a question from Elizabeth who says, where is she listening to her podcast if she's not at home? Is it while driving? <laughs> it's in the report. Go to edisonresearch.com and read the report. It's in the report. It's in the report. That's right. All right. Can I just say one more um, thing? Let's see. We're running. I don't, I don't want to keep you guys. Are you too? Are you okay going a little bit over like probably another yeah, five minutes? Okay. But Elton, yeah. can, I, can I just okay. say that yes. you don't have to make a podcast to be oh. in podcasting. That does not be said enough. We Agreed. need a podcast, but you do not have to actually make a podcast to be in podcasting. We need all kinds of people. You don't even need to know anything about audio to be in podcasting. Right. We need marketers and publicists. We need people. Graphic who, designers. Graphic designers, people who can organize events. We need people to design our t-shirts and our logos. I mean, honestly, yeah. there are thousands of ways. We need intellectual property lawyers. I'm looking at all of you who are lawyers. Come to podcasting. <laughs> we will find a place That's for right. you. More and more. I mean, it's a thing. <laughs> it is. It's an industry. It is a thing. Absolutely. Um, moving into, let's see, we have another one. How can we pitch up to a production company to help me with my podcast? You mean like, like a, because like I mean, there's a lot of people who had, are independent podcasters who can help you that are producing content um, and are really Uh -oh. oh no! She, she has declared it. it, and it happened. With so many different aspects. Of it. <laughs> you you can. Can. <laughs> You go. You guys answer. Okay. You go. Well, okay. So go. You know, I, we we can take pitches. So Adonde Media, you know, you can just email info at adondemedia.com, Juleka. Hello at latiquawilliams.com, uh, definitely. But also understand that we are going to judge you professionally, right? So we are expecting not a paragraph, but a full on deck, right? So take this very seriously because I know we're Latinas and we're all cool and everything, but we're running businesses and networks here. So you have to take yourself very seriously in order for us to take you seriously. And it really doesn't hurt if you can put uh, a two to three minute uh, trailer or teaser together, because that will get our attention even faster. If I can actually hear what your vision for your show is, um, that really, really helps a lot. Great. Okay, we lost Elsie again. I'll take the next question. Uh, let's see. I have a bilingual podcast about self-development. So this conversation is so awesome. I always feel in between worlds and worry that people won't be able to find me because my episodes are either in Spanish and English. If my episode is in Spanish, I put title name in Spanish and vice versa. What recommendations do you have for podcast visibility for those podcasts that are bilingual? Oh my God, this is such a good question. I'm so sorry. Oh, let's see who it was. It's um, Valentina. I'm so sorry, Valentina, that the industry is not ready for you yet. <laughs> the infrastructure sucks. As we were talking earlier, very hard to sort through. 
I mean, imagine Duolingo podcast, uh, um, the Duolingo Spanish podcast, very first bilingual podcast to ever hit number one on Apple. I don't even think there is a, 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 a tag for bilingual. Like we can't even, so it's very hard. It's very hard. So I do think you need separate marketing and promotion strategies. I think you're going to have to um, consider that your Spanish language audience is different than your English language audience. And there will be a one in the middle that's going to overlap, but you want to market and push them out separately and differently. Like it's, it, it is, it is a choice. It is a choice and it's a part of, it's actually experimenting and, and actually testing. It's a, a what am I looking for? Trial and error. So put out your Instagram posts for two months in English and in Spanish on the same channel and then see how much engagement you get and then spread them out and see if, you know, it's just, you're going to have to test it out. And honestly, your experience will inform our experience and hopefully inform the industry. So it grows along with your knowledge. So share your knowledge is the other thing I'm going to say, go out, experiment, and then share it on platforms, on listservs. I personally would love for you to email me and tell me how it goes because we're we're kind of playing around right now. We're still figuring this out. I don't know if Julika, you have a, any thoughts? No, the other thing with that is SEO. Really, really pay attention to how you, you know, really front load the key SEO words in your titles, in your blurbs, in your descriptions, in your notes. In both languages. Yeah, because a lot of folks do go to Google and look up bilingual podcasts. And so maybe get into the habit of in your show notes, just putting a bunch of words, bilingual podcast, podcast bilingue, you know, do a bunch of these words, podcast in Espanol, podcast in English, so that the SEO can naturally help you to, to lift your episodes. She's back. All right. So I think I'm back. And were you answering Valentina's question? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to add on to that question. There's a question at the bottom um, from Diana, and I think this is helpful. And I, you may or may not know this, but she says, Diana asked, I have two podcasts, one in Spanish and one in English, because I heard from people they wanted either or, or should I combine it? And, you know, when it comes to as a strategist, I would say to you, you can do whatever you want. You can have one feed for Spanish, one feed for English, or you can have a mixed feed. Unfortunately, technically, again, talking at you, um, Apple Podcasts, they really don't want you to mix languages in a feed. In fact, it might become a mm. problem for, and it could be a reason why you might disappear from Apple Podcasts because somebody might look that you have an English tag and then they listen and you're speaking in Spanish, that could actually get you booted. So um, in terms of technicality in your RSS feed, my suggestion to you is that you always, if you do have a Spanish show and then another episode is in English, to have the latest episode be reflective of the code that you have chosen in your RSS feed. So if it's an English tag, your latest show should always be in English. Um, unfortunately, there is no solution right now in Apple Podcasts because you can't have English and Spanish as a tag in your RSS feed. It's one tag. And I think that this is going to become an issue, not just for Spanish and English, but many other shows are going to be bilingual uh, from, from all over the world. So there, that needs to be some, some, some kind of solution right now, uh, technically. There's a great come podcast from that uh, she can look at. It's called Mija. And me have published right. in French, in Spanish, in Mandarin. And uh, um, the woman who publishes it is Latina. And she's really come up with an ingenious way on the one name for a podcast to have it be multilingual and multinational. So Miha is from uh, Ochenta Studio. So ochentastudio.com. Uh, and that's a great place to, to look at her. Lori's in here. I know I saw her. Hey, She's in the Lori. house in there. In She's the in the US. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. I'm going to pick another question. You want to scroll? We're going to do two more questions and then call it a day here. So you want to scroll through some of the questions there and see if anything floats your boat there? I don't have my glasses on, oh. so I pass. Okay. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> All right. Martina looks like she's um, thinking and I'm not sure what this means, but 
You're re are you reading? Are you reading? I am. I am reading. Which one should we do? Okay. Um, oh my goodness. Okay. There's a lot. Pick one. There's a lot. I know. You can have dead air. This is live. Okay. Here okay. we go. Here we go. Okay. Leo, I know this is live. Here we go. Yeah. We're both like, what? Okay. I know. I know. <laughs> okay. Perfectionist over here. Okay. I'm, okay. I'm new <laughs> We're to like Leo. Hi, I'm new to podcasting and everything related to it. I find it very interesting learning to use the platforms. I would like to learn more about it. I live in the Dominican Republic, Santo Domingo. My question, shout out DR. My question to you is, do you shout think Facebook DR. audio... <laughs> Do you think Facebook audio lives are a good tool to podcast? I find it very interesting, especially since Facebook is so big here. It also stays recorded. <laughs> what do you, what would you say to that, Julika? No. <laughs> <laughs> Just no. no. I've never done one. So I don't know if it's like a, I, my instinct is to say, why not? Yeah. Because it's not on an RSS feed. But can't you record it and then put it out? Yeah. On an RSS feed? Okay, fine. Convince me. Go ahead. Okay, there we go. <laughs> you know, I, the reason I chose this is because we got to get creative, people. No, right. We need to get creative. And so if the first incarnation of your podcast is actually an Instagram audio, fantastic. Then take it to RSS, <laughs> take it to WhatsApp, take it to YouTube, take it to Facebook Live, you, you know, and vice versa. Like, I think that's, that's where I live in this weird web of what is a podcast anyway. Go ahead. Oh my God. I wish I had my cocktail. <laughs> I agree. Okay. So we're going to do one more. One more. One more. Okay. You, oh, you choose see. it, Elsie. Hmm. Oh my gosh. Okay, okay, this sounds interesting to me. I'm only, I'm picking, so here we go. The last one, Rocio, Rocio, I'm frozen? No, no, you're fine, go. No, you're good. No, I'm fine, okay. So Rocio says, what do you do when the topic that you want to talk about is a taboo in your community, hint, hint, mm. Juleka, and your listeners don't know how to find you, like me with going through infertility? We oh, need wow. I, I actually know someone making it in Argentina, by the way. Okay. <laughs> that podcast. Um, Julie, you, like, you go ahead. I mean, I, oh I think say, well, that has never deterred me. I actually, I <laughs> <laughs> what the last show that I launched is called How to Talk to Mommy and Papi About Anything. And, you know, it, it is exactly that. We take on every single type of topic we can find someone willing to discuss on the air because this is part of serving your audience, right? There are tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of people who are having similarly difficult times at home, having conversations about racism and black liberation right now. So guess what our next episode is about? Racism and black liberation, mm -hmm. right? And so you have to step into that creative conflict, right? Because that creative conflict also applies to you as the person who is the creator, right? And so whenever, I mean, hesitation is for me, a really good sign that something is worth considering because it means that intrinsically, I fear whatever might be on the other side of that. And so it doesn't mean I'm gonna jump and do it, but I do say to myself, oh, there's my warning to myself. Let me just pursue this a little bit further. Let me just allow myself to be a little bit more uncomfortable. So before you even worry about how to get your show to your audience, make sure that you have a really strong concept for the show, right? Because infertility in the Latino community is really too broad, right? It's just really, really too broad. And so you can either focus it on sort of like the medical side and address it to the women. You can focus it on a more social cultural side and address it as a taboo subject in society. Like the, the better your focus, the better your chances are that your audience will come running to the show. And yes, infertility is really prominent among Latinas. It really, really is. And there's actually, um, we did a Latina to Latina episode with the founder of, 
uh, I think it's called Latina Reproductive Rights Network or something like that. Um, forgive me if I'm getting the, the name wrong, but there's a lot of need for this type of information and education uh, in, our, in, in Latino communities. And so I encourage you, and I will give you a consultation. Email me at hello at lantiguawilliams.com, lantiguawilliams.com. Um, and I will give you a free consultation so we can sort this out because I think that we need more thoughtful podcasts on things that we're afraid to talk about. Absolutely. Yep. So I just want to be respectful of everybody's time. Just wanted to let you know that there is a resource right at the bottom again, where you can connect with us and learn more information from all of us here so that we can really keep that conversation going. Um, there are all the links are if you click through into that link here. But uh, Martina, do you have anything that you want to share with us before we close, like either something, a thought, or maybe just something you're looking you want to drive people to right now <laughs> well i really would love for um y'all to join us at podcasteros.com we're doing this incredible we're doing series of webinars in spanish uh, from the top podcast producers around the spanish-speaking world and we're just so proud uh and also encuesta pod needs creators in the united states to participate you know we don't have enough um representation in the u.s so um, join us for Encuesta Pod, which we're doing again in the fall. Um, and the best way to stay in touch is to sign up for the newsletter. So you can find that information at podcasteros.com. And my last thought is just, you know, the number of people who have started, of Latinos who have started listening more in the last year. 80% said. Yeah, that's crazy. Started listening more. 44% started listening in the last six months. We are the new generation of listeners of podcasting. Yeah. And this is a, a, mass, a massive, massive opportunity. And so I just hope this emboldens everyone listening. And um, and yeah, it's, it's a definitely a hopeful, a hopeful message. Oh my gosh, absolutely. Juleika, how about you? Come to podcasting. It's really wonderful here, honestly. Um, I am a believer and um, I need more co-conspirators and co-creators like Martina and Elsie because as you can see we're making stuff happen because we're we're you know joining arm to arm and we are going to make a serious impact we are we are the next audience the future of the united states politically speaking demographically speaking is an educated brown woman and i'm not being a feminist when i say that i am being factual the future of the United States is a voting college educated brown woman. And so I'm just trying to get ready for her. That's what I'm trying to do. And many, many more <laughs> are to start getting ready for her. Yep. Amazing. And so wait, wait, you have to tell them about your podcasting okay, seriously okay. webinar. So podcasting seriously, two more <laughs> webinars coming up. Uh, one is how to level up in podcasting. And the other one is for anyone who wants to learn how to work for yourself, um, which is wonderful and never going back. So so that's one. Also listen to my show, How to Talk to Mommy and Papi about anything and give us, give us feedback. We're only 11 episodes in, so we can still make it even better. Um, and Latina to Latina, we are driving to 1 million downloads by January 1st. So I will take your one download every week if you will give it to us. <laughs> because that's another thing that we wanna do for the industry. We wanna say, look, indisputably, we can get a Latino show to a million downloads. We can do it. And that will have ripple effects for the rest of us who are trying to carve to carve space. So yeah. Yep. So uh, I saw a question that where do we sign up for the webinars? Just go ahead and con click on the link that says connect with us and learn more info here. All of Juleka's and Martina's links are yeah. there. So you can connect with all the things. And, and I'm sure even if you just follow them on, on yeah, uh, just, social, you yeah, can see the links there too. Everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, all the things in there. And then if uh, right now Libsyn is trying to really, really reach out and support uh, Spanish speaking podcasters. So we're working really strongly to not only amplify uh, Spanish speaking voices in podcasting, but also to create the infrastructure behind the scene to be able to keep people podcasting by, you know, translating and localizing the back end. And so we're slowly working through that process. We would love to have you just be a part of, of hosting with us. Um, in terms of me, if you, we are going to be launching something for She Podcast, which is a, a, the largest podcasting uh, community for women 
we are launching sort of like a, a, a pay, not a Patreon community, a community extra is how I call it. It's called the She Podcast Super Squad. You can find information over at shepodcast.com slash waitlist uh, to be, to check it out what's going on. We are so excited to create something fun and exciting like we can only do it because and, and I hope to lead within She Podcast a little more uh, Latina centric Spanish speaking community within that as well. So that's what we're for there. And again, links will all be there through that. Um, thank you so much, Martina and Juleka. You guys, y'all you. are so amazing. Thank, thank you, you so much for all this happen today. Yeah, you did. Thank you for all the things. <laughs> and then we might come together again at some point. <laughs> I, oh, we 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 like, we, I think we, we, we had to. Do. We will. <laughs> We will. All right, great. Well, thank, thank you, you everybody. everybody. And um, we look forward to seeing more Latinos speaking, you know, doing podcasting. So, yay. Bye. Yay. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.